I'm old enough to remember the time before the internet. I'm old enough to remember the time before nail guns was the standard amongst carpentry, for instance. So when I was a young man, we used a, uh, we used a hammer. We did not use one of these. This was a very expensive, privileged thing and was only used amongst certain circles. I'm also old enough to remember when a phone box, a public phone, was used and I'm also old enough to remember when these were whiz-bang new high technology. I'm also old enough to remember when truckers would use a trucker's hitch rather than one of these ratchet straps. A, a trucker's hitch can literally save your life. I, one of the best things I ever learned was how to tie a trucker's hitch. Now it's invaluable information. Uh, Amongst preppers, for instance, learning to uh, to use a trucker's hitch is essential knowledge. Uh, links will be in the description how to tie not only a trucker's hitch, but also the double or the triple trucker's hitch. It's not only free to learn, it can save you a lot of money or trouble, possibly even save your, your, your life or someone else's if you're in a difficult situation. Because you can apply many times your own force to secure a load. You can also lift many times your own weight using a trucker's hitch. Gather all the knowledge you can, it costs nothing and is no weight to bear. A uh, saying I heard when I was a young man and stayed with me still to this day. So this trucker's hitch, this knot, allows you to apply many times your own force to secure a load, but it also applies to lift a weight. So this is a, a pulley system, block and tackle. With a simple block and tackle, two pulleys, with 10 pounds of force, you can lift 20 pounds. With uh, add another loop, and you can lift double again. 10 pounds of force can lift 40 pounds. 10 pounds of force can lift 80 pounds, or 160, or 320 pounds. It allows you not only to secure the load, to, but, but to lift many times your own weight. This is ancient, not tying technology. So much technology, the old crafts, the old trades are being lost to industrialization, mechanization, where we're forgetting where we've come from. And these are tried and tested and ancient technology, which is being unfortunately lost and is very important to learn. Very, very important to learn. So the block and tackle is ancient lifting technology. Uh, farmers, for instance, uh, they've been using this so that a, a young man or a young lady can lift many times her own weight to lift a heavy hay bale into the barn, for instance. Going back to uh, the 1600s, and we see this depiction by Robert Flood of this block and tackle system where one man can lift many, many times his own weight with a rope and a few pulleys. Now, you don't even need an iron pulley, as so many people have tried to straw man me. You can even just wrap it around logs. It, it doesn't require you know, a, a, a pulley with an axle. You can even do it easier, such as the trucker's hitch. A single piece of rope can be used. So this is a single trucker's hitch. In the video, in the link, in the description, we'll even show you how to tie to a triple. You can use a, a double. You can use the same, just add a, another loop, and you have a triple trucker's hitch. And you can ap apply many, many times your own force to apply this. This is ancient technology, essential knowledge for builders and sailors since antiquity. How were, I, how were sailors able to lift those heavy sails? How were sailors able to secure the mast on a ship? The forces, the wind blowing on the sails is massive amount of, inf of force. So you need a really strong f rope and a, and a tight rope to secure the mast from falling over. A few sailors can tighten that rope. So if you just throw a rope over and tie a knot in the end, you know that it will slip a little bit and the rope will become very slack. So using this technology, you can apply many, many times your own force. This is ancient technology. For instance, this is a, uh, an ancient Roman carving which shows them that they understood the principle of block and tackle, not only to tighten the sails, but to secure the mast. This was what, in the, in the days of sail, this was essential basic knowledge and has been used since ancient times. Now, again, you don't need pulleys. For instance, typically a block would just be, well, a simple wooden block with a few holes in it and the rope is wrapped around a few times to to secure the mast, to tighten the sails well beyond the strength of the sailors pulling on the rope. Uh, sailors still to this day, well, you, you see even teenage sailors sail around the world and just with that winch technology, now the winch is using a gear 
but it's it's essentially the same uh, technology. Now, even ancient Egyptians uh, show have these um, artifacts which show the principles of cogs were understood. The Antikythera mechanism is just a system of gears, and again, showing that ancient people understood these basic principles, and of course, they understood mechanical advantage, levers, inclined planes for block and tackle beyond dispute that this was understood in ancient times. We also see it applied in cranes. So a, a wheel is again a simple machine. The wheel, the inclined plane, the gear, uh, the pulley, uh, these are the principles which underlie even lifting technology today. The, big, the massive heavy cranes you see on a construction site, it's not the, the motor which is lifting the weight. The motor can only lift a small portion of the weight. It's this concept of mechanical advantage in the block and tackle that actually lifts the weight. So again, you can verify this. You just look at the horsepower in a crane motor as opposed to the amount that it's lifting. And it is only a small portion of the lifting capacity of even a modern crane. And it is ancient technology used since antiquity. A small amount, a group of people can lift, one person can lift many, many times their own weight. A few people can lift huge huge weights and so again we see the concept of block and tackle known since antiquity not only is it shown in illustrations it's also described in exquisite detail in such as in the books of architecture by the uh, first century roman architect vitruvius this is and the romans inherited their knowledge from previous people the famous sailors such as the, the phoenicians surely understood this uh, technology you cannot create a sail vessel you cannot sail the oceans unless you understand the basics of knot tying and of block and tackle just like the age of of uh of sail with the tall with the clippers and these types of ships it the, the whole thing is built on this basic ancient system of knowledge you can lift many times your own strength you can lift many times your own you can secure many times your own strength you can lift many times your own weight with this simple with a piece of rope you don't even need the axle pulleys, you could even use logs or, or a similar device. It, this is not required in there. The only limitation is the strength of the rope, and you can just simply double or triple or quadruple the amount of rope. And lifting frames, for instance, using red cedar, you build a lifting frame of red cedar, you can lift astronomical amounts of weight. Uh, for instance, they still, the, yeah, even now when they're doing lifts, so, uh, the wooden frames and the amount that they can support. Uh, is astronomical when you see the massive ships moving um, those oil oil platforms and it's it's on a ship the wood under it's not steel it's actually wood underneath the deck of the ship supporting that weight so timber can support that weight and you can lift heavy weights ancient technology ancient principles so any suf sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic this is a famous quote by Arthur C. Clarke if you're not familiar with the power of knot tying, such as a trucker's hitch, or the block and tackle, this would seem as if anti-gravity technology, it would seem as if if magic, Ed, Ed Seed Scallon, Seed uh, Lead Scallon in Coral Castle, even filmed using a block and tackle to lift those weights. One person can lift those weights. This is literally off-the-shelf technology known since antiquity. I worked in the industry, I know it in detail how this works. And again, because it's not well known and the principles of physics and mechanical advantage are not really well known these days. And so it would appear to, to the uninitiated that this sort of lifting technology is impossible or anti-gravity when it's anything but it's well recorded since ancient times. This is a 100 ton chain hoist. One person pulling on this slim chain here can lift 100, 100 tons on their own barely breaking a sweat. This is, again, off-the-shelf lifting technology. This is the type of stuff I was immersed in. I know it well. It's easily researched. It's easily verified. I'm, 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 I'm not blowing smoke. You can check this. Please do. Please check everything which I've said here. It really is a few Google clicks away. So one person, if they understand the principles of mechanical advantage and and how a pulley works, how two pulleys work, and how three pulleys work together, you on your own can lift 100 tons. Now this is a modern version using the modern 
high tensile steel and and modern equipment but this modern version is nothing but uh one of these that's that's literally all it is this ancient technology has just been made that much better by lifting by modern materials so a chain can obviously hold more weight than a rope but of course you can just double up your rope there's literally no rim limit to how thick or how strong you can make your rope and only the only thing is the lifting frame and using for instance the famous Lebanese red cedar you uh, to make a lifting frame out of of red cedar or, or cedar in general or ash or these other well-known timbers you can make a, a huge a lifting frame of massive massive strength Again, easily checked, easily checked. So many people will talk about the limitations of ancient people to lift heavy stone, yet they never really talk about mechanical advantage or the properties of hemp rope or, or the ability to create a lifting frame from timber. They'll often state that the timber cannot support the weight or the rope cannot support the weight. This is thoroughly untrue. And these so-called experts who never mention ancient lifting technology or principles because they don't, no, or they seek to pretend it doesn't exist. Uh, the principles of mechanical advantage are exquisitely described in ancient texts, and these people coincidentally will often complain about a cover-up of modern history. I could easily accuse them of a cover-up to protect their narrative. And everything I say, you please double, triple check it. You will find that what I'm telling you is known and recorded uh, as opposed to so many of the alternatives who will make statements which I claim and I, I you know with this evidence I and with my own experience and knowledge I uh, are entirely untrue or ignorant either way it doesn't really matter whether it's intentional or or through ignorance it's simply untrue so snake oil salesmen rely on the trust of their customers to sell the where sell their wares it's been the basis of con men since the beginning of time Accuse other people of deceit to create the illusion of honesty. It's a simple psychological trick. It's been used in ancient times. It's still being used today by snake oil merchants. Um, pyramid schemes, cult leaders such as Jim Jones or Bernie Madoff use this as their modus operandi. You know that you're being conned. This is the standard calling card of a confidence trickster. You can really double check now. It's a trick as uh, the trick is it's a trick as old as a knowledge of mechanical advantage ironically enough uh, simply by fact checking claims you can protect yourself from snake oil profiteers and there are more than a few of them on both the establishment but also on the alternative side so no one is perfect and an error or two is no sign of deceit however a consistency of erroneous and easily checked claims is a definite red flag beware in the age of the internet and search engines, it only takes a few minutes to check. Remember though, if you type bunkum into a search engine, the result will be bunkum. What you need to do, for instance, is to climb to type claim debunked and look into the alternative explanations to get a wider net of results. This is very important. A search engine will deliver you to what you search for. It will not it will not deliver you automatically to the uh, uh, the the truth, let's say. So if it sounds too good to be true, it doesn't mean it is untrue. Skepticism is a two-way street. However, vested interest is not only an establishment issue, but it is an issue amongst the alternative also. Just like the phone, it actually works both ways. Only you can protect yourself. So remember, the truth exists, lies are invented, and it really is not up to a, a, a YouTube commentator or any commentator or any argument from authority to believe something. You really need to protect yourself from these claims. And you might find that these extraordinary claims are true. This, this is an important thing. Just because it sounds too good to be true doesn't mean that it is untrue. However, that really, the emphasis is on you to check these things and to double check anyone, whether it's me or, or anyone else out there. You, only you can protect yourself. So please, please, I beg of you, double check. Don't just type in what you want to find because you will find it. Type in also what you don't want to find to find a, a broader perspective, a broader uh, 
idea of the views and the information that's available. With that, cheers, have a good one, protect yourself.